we've got two more ribs to stitch and then the next then, then it'll be complete and then the next step will be go over it with an iron okay the calibrated iron and finish do the go to final the final recovery they call it and what does what does the iron do it's going to shrink the dacron okay and, and that'll make it tighter okay right now it's still a little loose the way the the glue joints are on the multiple pieces of fabric. We just got the wrinkles out and kind of snugged it up. Okay. And then, then we do the rip stitching, and then it's set. It's not gonna. We're not gonna lose a joint now okay. that it's stitched. So then we'll go through with the calibrated iron and get it to the final tautness. Okay. And then we'll put we'll brush coat a coat of dope on all of the the rib stitch knots. So okay. It actually kind of glues it all together. That kind of yeah. helps some yeah. too. And then we'll come back with a piece of tape, kind of like masking tape, that we'll put over each one of these rows on okay. the tops of the ribs. Right. It kind of puts it, it's, it's padding tape, sort of like the, the tape is that's on the wood. Right. Remember how I told you before right. that we yeah. put a piece of tape everywhere the fabric touches the wood? Right. We'll put another piece of tape over all these rib stitch knots, and then we'll put the finishing tapes, the okay. pink tapes. And that, okay. that padding tape that you put over the knots, when you start sanding, it keeps you from cutting through cutting the, with, okay because you don't have something this. hard behind the fabric it'll keep right. when you're sanding you won't go through the tape and at the high spots it's an amazingly complex process it is for as simple as the airplanes are right and let me just throw this in it's march 23rd uh, 2014 we're justin at the uh, prop wash with uh, lanny parcel and tom swindle and uh, they are continuing the efforts on the uh, on the travel air 5000 how far are you from having the wings complete? Once we start the taping process, uh, I bet these wings will be through the silver in a week. Really? Yeah, once, okay. we, once we finish the finish the rib stitching, which we will today, we got two more ribs to go. Okay. It takes us about 30 minutes a rib. Okay. 17 ribs a wing, and it kind of gives you an idea. <laughs> yeah, okay. We've been doing this for a while, yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're ready to move to something else. So how many coats of silver will be on this? Well, actually what it'll get, we'll tape it, and I think we'll be able to tape it out in probably 10 hours. Okay. We'll tape the wing out, and then it'll get two brush coats of, of poly brush okay which would have been the, at the day that would have been equivalent to the clear nitrate dope okay that they used on okay. the cotton back right. in the day and then it'll get three coats of of silver poly spray which was the equivalent of the silver butyrate dope that they put on top okay all right and that's where we're going to do a little experimenting do some test spots because we're trying for a period looking finish sure and i think they brushed everything through the the poly products my my typical process is I actually start spraying the earlier okay. than what they would have okay. done back in the day because I'm trying to lose the brush strokes and trying to okay. lose the tape edges. Right. And on this one, we're going to try to keep it a more period finish. Okay. So, so you don't we're going to brush it a little further than I normally would. They weren't would do spraying this. then, you don't think? I think they were spraying, but I bet it was just final coats. Okay. Okay. And all the all the stuff that, like I said, the clears and the and the silver butyrate. The wood, they would have brushed back in the day. We're going to see how that works. Okay. And how are you on your timeline? I'm probably about two weeks behind schedule right Okay. Now. Well, that's still not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, we did have some weather weeks and some stuff like that. We've so. had a lot of weather yeah. this year. What was it, 60? We had 61 days below freezing right. this, this winter. Was it that many? That hampered me quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So once the wing is finished, then, we're, uh, then where will we go? Well, I'd like to get the wings. Um, my plan is to get the wings as, just as quick as we can go. We're gonna we're gonna get the wings through the silver, put the fuel tanks in, put the final silver on them, put the end numbers on the wings, okay. and they'll basically be ready to put on the airplane. Okay. And then we're gonna wrap them up and stash them out of the way, and then okay. then it's 100% on the fuselage. On the fuselage. Yeah, and the fuselage is really other than finishing up our cabin seats for the passengers in the okay. back. The fuselage is put the finish the plywood skinning okay. on the left side of the cockpit right. and then I'm I'm ready to start putting fabric on the fuselage. Okay, and that's and not going to be near as, as tedious not, as this part. Correct. Right. Yeah, they didn't from what I can see, I haven't found anything. I don't think they rib stitched the fuselage. Okay. Now, and it probably wouldn't need it on like on on some bigger airplanes that have a well, what would be one that you would equate to like a, a bamboo bomber? Yeah. Something yeah. like that. The fuselage is actually an airfoil shape. Right. 
Okay. And and it went fast enough they actually had to rib stitch the top of the fuselage. Oh, to keep so the it didn't keep it from blowing out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't think I can't find anything that said they rib stitched the fuselage okay. on the travel air. If you had any discussions with the people in Oklahoma? No, that's a good question I could ask them if they rib stitched that. So and I saw the uh, I saw the pictures that uh, that uh, Jerry came up with of the of the instrument panel. So right. you got a much better idea what that looks right. like now. Now I guess that the trick is going to be filling the holes. Yeah, I've I've found some sources. Okay. We've got a couple of instruments. I mean, some of them are standards that they didn't even change all the way through World War II. You know, the bubble face compass sure. and the sure. the mag switch and the the harder ones to find are going to be the the altimeter because that was a, actually a four and a half inch diameter altimeter. It was a big one. It was a big. You know, yeah. it looked like a car instrument. Yeah, right. Kind of a yeah. Thing, you know? yeah. Like a car speedometer. Yeah. We've got a four and a quarter inch airspeed indicator that that came with the project. Okay. And the Turner Bank, I don't think the Turner Bank's any any different than okay. than that's pretty much been a standard since they they went to a gyro style okay. turn and bank and this airplane had that on it because we found the venturi tube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So Well I know we've we've been out here and talked to you a few times and uh, always asked the question, what's been the biggest challenge so far? I think it, I'm still sticking with the woodwork on the fuselage. Okay. That was the biggest, and we're still not quite finished, but I think we're we've, we're downhill now. Okay. I've got the shape set, the right side of the fuselage, the plywood's all on, and that all worked out. Well, that almost looks like furniture work. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you did a pretty, really nice it? job. In it. And, yeah. and that hasn't really been cleaned up and varnished yet. And okay. It'll look like like a coffee table. Well, I, I opened the door up too, and the way yeah. it just kind of comes down and everything, mm -hmm. it's uh, that's really a nice piece. Yeah, it worked nice out piece. well. And so it's going to be the same way on the other side, correct? Yes, right, okay. right. You know, I was looking at that, thinking about climbing into it, and it's that would have been a bit of a trick. This I, wasn't going to be a graceful entry and exit into the cockpit. That's right, because there's nothing to there's nothing to step on except the top of the tire and then yeah. the bottom of the door. Yeah, there's and a little a big, cut out a for big, the there's a little toe cut out in yeah, there. Yeah, so. that's a big reach. Yeah, it is. It's a three yeah. foot step. Yeah. On a on a wet tire, on wet grass. Yeah, that yeah. could. Well, I it found it inter interesting. I found it interesting because we talked to talked to people at the museum about some of the the early guys like Cal Rogers and and uh, Benjamin Floy and and some of those guys. And we've got the life size cutout of Floy, and he wasn't a very tall person. He was right. just over five feet. And we mm -hmm. told people it's it's kind of like being a jockey then because you had to have little people because the airplanes didn't carry right. carry a lot of weight and that kind of thing. But this is a different step because a little person would have had a lot of trouble getting into that cockpit. Right. You know, it's all the rest of it. So, uh, are you considering putting a book together on the experience of this afterwards? Yeah, yeah, Jerry. I think Jerry's kind of got the outline kind of already started. Well, that's. I know I've seen the 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 kind of booklet that he did for you all here. Right. And but just the other pictures he's found and everything else, I just think that'd be a great piece to leave behind because, like, like we've all said. You're not going to get to see the interior of this when it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to get to see a lot of the detail that you and Tom and the other people have put into this. And I think that would be a great piece, even if just for the crew that you know that yeah, worked on the airplane. Absolutely. And maybe something that could be with the airplane when it's in the museum, so mm -hmm. people could see the work. Is that's the thing we have all the time. We people come out and they look at the airplanes and they go, "Oh, this is really nice." And we go, "Oh, it took us nine months to do this," and "Oh, that's really nice." But until you show them the before and after pictures. You know, like the picture of it as a skeleton sitting at uh, sitting at Carter's uh, ranch. Yeah, yeah, Shady Oaks. Uh, in the yeah, it's Shady Oaks. To what you've got today, then people can look at that and they can go, "Oh my God!" Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, so. that's that's a strong consideration to put together a coffee table book and 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 I know they're not that hard to do anymore with all the electronic tools we have. Yeah, and there's plenty of there's plenty of vanity type press that'll put those things together too. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I just think it'd be a great companion piece with the airplane because there's not a lot of this I think that's ever going to be done again. Right. You know, frankly, you guys are going to be a handful of people that have been able to say this, and where this airplane's concerned, one of gr two groups. Yeah. <laughs> now that's, that's true. So that's uh, that's that's pretty small company. It is. You know, so I think it's uh, I just think it's wonderful what I'm, the, the work that I'm seeing and the and the heart and soul you guys are putting into this is just really really impressive. Well, thank you. So. Uh, so I think we'll we'll leave you for today. Let you get back to your uh, knot tying and your your sailor part of this operation. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Again, thanks for letting us come out and uh, sure. and Anytime. watch this for a while. Well, I was waiting for Lanny to tie a knot. I was calculating. You know, each each one of these stitches has a knot. In it. Right. And real ballpark figures are about 300 knots per wing. 
So that makes it a 600 knot airplane. <laughs> uh, Lane, you're about a quarter okay. high. Is it okay, we'll go over here. Now, yeah. yeah, Lane is out there and I'm trying to type things and make sure everybody's with me. Well, I had left about noon, came back here, and as soon as I landed in Dallas and turned my phone on, it lit up like a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with the blind, do you want to hang up something like a banner from the museum? Yeah, sure, we can have a banner. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, I'm trying to look. Okay, go. We'll bring a banner, you find a spot, as long as it's not in the bathroom. Although that might be good. No, we get all this That's what I mean. That's yeah. Where you, man, that's where you were busy. Yeah. Yeah. Every bit of it, even though it said it wouldn't show, we did it in the show. We did it in the doors. Oh. He said it not to try to get it just right. Yeah. It's very ridiculous, especially that one. Well, I can tell it's beautiful. It, something about the angle of it. Yeah. Well, it's got compound curves on and it. He, yeah, and he had to, he shaved every bit of that by hand. You don't mind talking? No. No? No. He's um, now a new toilet pilot. Oh, okay. One of Lenny's best friends is yeah. over there taking his D6 class. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, just um, if you know Lenny, you've got to know Mark. I don't know. I haven't met him. Okay, but right, there you go. Okay. But he's here, so. Okay. Come Dan Lynn's friend from Oh, I thought Bombardier. I thought him. Oh. Wow. Two corporate piles from Really something. Nice. What I hear of in this PowerPoint, he does the museum. Oh, okay. Never anything with my own eyes. Oh, so this is just, now where did this picture come from? We think it came from the Star Collection. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Jerry's been, uh, of course you've seen that Yeah, one, sure, we've seen, seen this one. No, never seen That's that That's the tail ends. Yeah. Just rotted off of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's cool, and especially this. Yep. That really tells you what's it doesn't tell you well, what's in it. Throttle. Well, all of yeah. these see at this brake right here. Right. That's all QEC for the engine. And this oh, so box. that just pulls off with the engine. Right. That's that and part. That, okay. See this little box thingy here? Yeah. That's yeah. all the engine stuff, and it that goes through the firewall. Yeah. And okay. whatever, and we've got that box. We, uh, I'll show you the piece, the shroud that goes over this, and the okay. two humps. Okay. It's down there in the office. I should have showed that to you while we were down there. Uh, but uh, oh, you got that piece on down at the bottom that we brought. I brought yes, back. Sir. Here's the uh, the carburetor. I wanted this to be, be a piece of jewelry since it's kind of hanging down on the bottom of the engine. Right. But it's not the piece of jewelry I wanted because this is a concrete shaped carburetor. It's in the shape of a carburetor, but it's yeah, concrete. Yeah. Because I tried... Well, what were you try trying to do with it? I was trying to pick, take it all apart and where I could get all of it pretty much kind of functioning like I would get yeah, everything else. Yeah. But uh, uh, it, I couldn't get it apart. Okay. It's, it's concrete. Yeah. And of course, it's the bottom down there. It's sure. laid out there sure. and filled up with water and dirt and dirt gobbers and everything else for 50 years plus. You guys have done such a wonderful job with this. Well, I mean, you really, you truly really have. We're real proud of it, and we're tickled to death to be able to do it. You know, there's such, it's such significance, so significant to it. It's it really is. is. You know, it, I mean, it truly is, and many, many people are never going to understand that. Yeah, exactly. Including the Carter Foundation. <laughs> yeah, so I understand. Sorry if this place is a little funky. We found a dead skunk in here yesterday. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're gonna say it's time to hear it smells too Yeah, well that's true.
I mean, we're funky enough without having a skunk die in here with us. Yeah, yeah I, want, I want to get a picture of you with your engine. Oh, okay. Highway. Yeah, just give me a smile. <laughs> like you're proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Yeah, I'll, you know, it was funny last year. I was one of, uh, last year we were going down to see Harry, mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> we we passed a dead skunk. I'd say two a mile. Oh yeah, for miles and miles and miles, yeah. and mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out what it was. There is very that they prolific were, little they were all out there. I mean, yeah. I've never seen it. <laughs> so is this the shroud you're talking about back here? That's the bottom half. Okay. Yeah. The top one, well, it was really bent up. Because the top one, I'll show you in a minute, yeah. it's got two humps right here for the, the uh, mags and all the wires coming in. Oh, okay. Okay. This is the bottom. Ah, and I had right. it's in pretty good shape. Yeah. 